اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم آئی ہوپ آل آف یو آر ڈوئنگ ویل ٹوڈے آئی ایم گوئنگ ٹو ٹاک اباؤٹ اے ٹاپک دیٹ آئی ڈڈ ناٹ ہیو اینی انٹینشن ٹو ٹاک اباؤٹ ہاؤ ایور ون آف مائی فرینڈس فرام کیلیفورنیا ہی آسٹ می ٹو ٹاک اباؤٹ دس ٹاپک The topic is, is it permissible to migrate from a Muslim country to a non-Muslim country? And is it okay to stay in a non-Muslim country? This is the question my friend asked me to talk about. I promised myself not to give any photo huh? because many scholars well-known scholars, they talked about it and they have their own photos on it. What I would like to do is I will refer some verses from the Quran and I will try to explain what I understood from these verses and then you will have a choice to make. You can make your own decisions. Another friend also asked another question that if a, an orphan girl is abducted by some bad people and if she is forced to do some bad stuff like prostitution and she had no way to escape from that abduction, what will happen to that girl? Will she go to hell or will God forgive him? Again, these are very serious questions. I will not give my opinions. I will only bring some reference from the Quran. So let's uh, start talking about the first topic. Is it permissible to migrate from a Muslim country to a non-Muslim country? We may make this um, academic discussion that what do we mean by a Muslim country or non-Muslim country, but I will not go there because we all understood at least in traditional sense, what is a Muslim country? All the countries like Saudi Arabia and the Middle East, Bangladesh, Pakistan are considered Muslim country. On the other hand, the countries in Europe, America, Australia, all are considered non-Muslim country, at least in traditional sense. So I will not go there. Let's focus on this topic. Before I bring the reference from the Quran, I would like to remind few um, points. First of all, in the Quran, um, God clearly mentioned what is the priority in our life, why he had created us. In chapter 51, verse number 56, God has clearly mentioned that I did not create the gene and human except to serve me. So that means our priority in life is to serve God. That's what we also say during our salam, during our contact prayer. You alone we serve and you alone we ask for help. So that's the main purpose of our life. So we have to think, how can we serve God? Do we need to migrate to serve him? Those are the questions we have to think. But let's bring another point. In You may remember that we have heard during our childhood and throughout our life that after God created us, he asked, am I not your Lord? And we all answered, yes. So God made us our own witness that we told God that yes, you are our creator, you are our Lord. God also, in the same verse, it is um, chapter 7, 172, that verse I'm referring, uh, towards the end of that verse, God also mentioned that he did that so that we cannot find an excuse in the day of judgment or in the day of resurrection that God, we did not know that you are our creator or 
we have to do like we simply cannot give an excuse that we didn't know that you are our creator this is got clearly mentioned what i understood from this verse that we have no excuse to give in the day of resurrection our purpose in life our priority in life is to serve god and we simply cannot bring an excuse that simply we didn't know this because we already agreed and that's why god made us witness that's what he said in verse chapter 7 172 this is one thing second thing remember after god created adam he asked all the angels to bow down to adam to prostrate to adam everyone did except iblis and iblis became shaitan from that time because of his arrogance because he did not follow god guidance or some um, whatever god god asked him and what happened iblis asked shaitan asked god res- for respite until the day of resurrection until the day of judgment and god gave him respite but god did not ask shaitan that you cannot be in a muslim country you can be only in a non muslim country that's what god did not say what does that mean that means shaitan exists all over the world whether it's a muslim country or a non muslim country shaitan is real evil is real is all around us no matter where we are let's come to the third point Remember prophet peace be upon him migrated from Mecca to Medina why was Medina was a muslim country at that time no he was being oppressed in Mecca he was not able to follow what he was supposed to follow he simply did not have the freedom to do whatever he wanted to do whatever god asked him to do so he had to migrate from the oppression in mecca to medina so i'm telling these three things so that you can keep in perspective when i am going to bring the reference from the quran about this main topic that i started that is it permissible to migrate from the muslim country to a non muslim country another thing that i would like to bring is think about the fundamentals of islam is freedom equality and justice so whether you call it a muslim country or non muslim country you have to think these three things freedom equality and justice god has created us with complete freedom freedom to choose it's our choice if we do not have this freedom in any place whether in a village in a country or wherever then we have a choice to move out we have to move out if we think our freedom is impacted we cannot have the freedom to do whatever we want to do those are the things we have to remember now let's come to a specific verse uh, from the quran uh, chapter 4 verse number 97 uh, i will talk about verse number 97 98 99 and 100 but let's talk about uh, 97 first chapter 4 is surah nisa So what is God talking about in verse number uh, 97 Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Those whom the angels take while they had drawn themselves were asked what situation were you in they responded we were oppressed on earth they asked was God's earth not wide enough that you could immigrate in it to this their abode will be hell what a miserable destiny 
It's simply saying that afterward this when angel come to some people who wrong themselves, that means who are sinner, and the angels are asking, what the heck happened to you? What situation you are in? And they were giving excuse that we were oppressed in the earth. And angels are responding that was God's earth not spacious enough, not wide enough? Why didn't you migrate? So it is simply talking about oppression. That if you are oppressed, if we are oppressed in a place that we cannot do what we are supposed to do, move out, migrate. That's what this verse is talking about. It is actually encouraging us. It is asking us to migrate. It is not in reference to whether it is a Muslim country or non-Muslim country. Wherever you are, if you are oppressed, God is asking, migrate from there. So that you don't have an excuse in the Day of Judgment that you couldn't do. I think it is very clear. I do not need to explain and you do not need to bring anything else here. It is so clear. The next verse is saying, Except for those men, women and children who were oppressed and could not devise a plan, nor could be guided to a way. Next verse saying, For these, perhaps God will pardon them. God is pardoner for giving. Again, when some people give an excuse to the angels that they were oppressed on the earth, angels are saying, why didn't you migrate? You, we are not accepting your excuse. Your abode is in hell. And then next saying, except those men, women and children who were oppressed and could not devise a plan, nor could be guided to your way. So that means men, women and some people who did not really have the means to migrate, they may get an exception. Even the next verse is saying, for these, perhaps God will pardon them. God is pardon or forgiving. God is simply saying, for these people who did not have the means to migrate from the oppression and they couldn't do whatever they were supposed to do, God may forgive them. And that's why coming to the another point that another friend asked that, what will happen to your orphan girl if she's abducted and she's forced to do some bad stuff we can simply see in this that she's oppressed and she doesn't have any means to escape from there in those situations god could could be pardon or god could forgive them that's what god is talking about it is very clear about oppression and who are who can give an excuse who does not have a means to escape from that oppression. And then the next verse even saying a specific situation during the prophet's time that whoever immigrates in the cause of God will find in the land many spoils and a bounty. Whoever leaves his home immigrating to God and his messenger then uh, is overcome by death. His reward has fallen to God and God is forgiving, compassionate. That is very specific to the situation at that time during the prophet's time. But the other three verses that we just read is very clear that whether you can, if you are oppressed if in a, in a place, go migrate it. Now think about our own situation. Whether we are, we were born in a Muslim country or non-Muslim country, irrespective of that. Wherever we are, if we think we do not have the freedom, we do not have the equality and justice set, that we can practice whatever we want to practice. Our life is a choice, it's a freedom. Think about this, God has created us with complete freedom. We have the freedom to believe in Him, we have the freedom not to believe in Him. This is the freedom God has given. And if a state simply take away this freedom from us, then God is asking, go migrate. And because the, you, God does not want to hear an excuse from us in the Day of Judgment, that we couldn't follow God's guidance because we are oppressed. That's what it is talking about here. 
So I think um, it is very clear. Uh, I know my friends also mentioned that some scholars uh, have some lectures. They simply talked against it that migrating from a Muslim country to non-Muslim country is prohibited. Even some scholars mentioned that if somebody is born in a non-Muslim country, they have to uh, migrate to a Muslim country uh, because it is better for them uh, because they may not be able to practice. Again, I'm not going in that direction. I'm simply saying if we do not have the freedom to practice, then yes, we have to migrate. If we think we are free to practice whatever we want to practice, you can stay wherever you want to stay. He also mentioned that some um, uh, scholars mentioned that living in a non-Muslim country is difficult to raise kids because there are a lot of issues. Yes, that is in, in this time of our life, yes, it is difficult to live no matter where you are. That's, life is not easy. But that does not mean that we have to bring two things together and mix up. There is no mixing here. Living in a non-Muslim country or Muslim country has nothing to do with that. You can, you can be anywhere and you, your life could be difficult depend, depending on how we try to live. Even our situations, our environment, our surroundings definitely impact it. Some scholars also pointed out that why um, some people who are born in a non-Muslim country needs to move out and then moved to a Muslim country, uh, they brought uh, obscenity as one of the biggest issues, lewdness. Think about this way, 1400 years ago, obscenity was there. Why I'm saying that? Because there is a verse in um, chapter 24-30, God has mentioned the acknowledging men to lower their gaze. Think about why would God ask to lower our gaze if our surroundings there is no obscenity? If everything was the way that you think should be, then why God would ask to lower our gaze? Similarly, verse number 31, chapter 24, God also asked the acknowledging women to lower their gaze. All these things indicates that the surrounding that we see in this world existed before, it exists now, will exist in the future. But we have to have our strong belief in God. We have to have the clear understanding of what we are supposed to do. And as long as we have the freedom to follow it, there is no issue here. I think uh, I do not want to extend this discussion any further. I hope you understood it. And you can make your own decisions uh, from this. I'm not going to tell you either way this or that. I think this is very clear. Assalamu alaikum.